It was early in 1974 when Frank Frazetta was contacted by a man named Dennis Wakabayashi, lived in the Denver, Colorado area. Dennis had this idea of forming a company and having all the significant artists of the day do portfolios for him. The company was called Middle Earth. So he contacted John Severin, he contacted Barry Windsor Smith, he contacted Jeff Jones, and he contacted Frank Frazetta. And he wanted Frank Frazetta to do a series of portfolios for him. He wanted him to do a Lord of the Rings portfolio, he wanted him to do a, a Kubla Khan portfolio, and then he wanted him to do a third portfolio called Women of the Ages. Well, in front of here, we have the Black Nazgul, the Witch King of Agmar, a tremendous illustration from the Lord of the Rings portfolio published by Middle Earth. This is easily the finest illustration in that portfolio and has had a profound impact on all the people that like Frazetta. All of the artists have copied this particular design, the flow of the capes, the energy. It is simply a wonderful piece of drawing. And what we can say about this is that Frazetta used a little different approach during this time period. This was done in 1975. Before this, Frank was doing a lot of painting. He was doing much more painting than he was drawing. Prior to this series of portfolios, he had done a number of Edgar Rice Burroughs illustrations for the Mars series, for the Doubleday paperbacks. But there weren't that many. For the most part, he was doing a lot of painting. And so his sensibility was that of a painter. And so when he came to doing this series of portfolios, it was an entirely different approach because he was taking a very painterly approach to these things. And so you can see there's a lot of wash tones that are involved in this. There's a lot of drawing, yes indeed, the drawing will always be there, but he incorporated that painterly approach and, and spotting wash tones throughout the illustration. You have to understand, Frazetta over the years would tell everybody his favorite movie was, was King Kong, the original version of King Kong. That was kind of a standard answer that Frank would always give to anybody that asked him about that. Most people don't realize, in the later years, Frank changed that opinion. When the Godfather movies were, were made by Francis Ford Coppola, Frank absolutely loved them, especially the first two Godfather movies. He thought these were tremendous. He loved movies that had that storytelling quality along with great acting. And certainly the Godfather movies had that. However, those Godfather movies were then thrown out in the trash once The Lord of the Rings was introduced. I remember talking to Frank on the phone and he said, Dave, have you seen that Lord of the Rings movie? There's nothing like it. It's the best thing I've ever seen. How can a movie be any better than this? He was extremely excited by these movies. And for Frank to speak so glowingly about anything is very, very rare. So when Frank, and, and when Frank did this illustration, it was long before the Lord of the Rings and Tolkien became an international phenomenon. Now, uh, Lord of the Rings is a household name. Everybody knows it, everybody's seen the movies, they're on TV constantly. As a matter of fact, they're, they're wildly overexposed. But when Frank was doing this in 75, he was basically doing it for a small group of uh, people who really appreciated the Lord of the Rings and had read the, the trilogy. I think the trilogy, trilogy is sensational. In my entire lifetime, I've only met one person who didn't like it, and that was the artist Bill Stout. And I think we completely disagree on that score. I think The Lord of the Rings is one of the great novels of the 20th century, no question about it. In any case, this is simply a sensational example, and a sensational example of Frank's drawing power later on in his career. And all of the portfolio work that he did from that period had that same type of painterly approach. Consider, for example, this plate from the Kublai Khan portfolio. Once again, one of the very finest plates. This is the death scene from Kublai Khan. Frazetta titled it Kublai's Anguish. And uh, it's, a, it's a scene emblematic of the human condition a scene of death, a scene of loss. The design is absolutely perfect. The energy, the emotion that comes out of this scene is just something that has to be experienced. For many, many years, 
this particular piece hung in a spot of honor right in Frank's studio. He could see it directly from his drawing board and he always drew great inspiration from it. It was very, very, very difficult for me to get this piece off of Frank's walls. It took me years and years and years. Once again, from the Kublai Khan portfolio, when Frank was doing studies for this particular piece, he actually had to put a lot of thought into it. He did about five studies, all pen and ink studies. He actually did a color study as well, now that I think of it. And when he started doing the studies, they were very dramatic, very wildly histrionic, very over the top. And then as he started to work on the idea, he began to take it down a notch, make it more and more subtle, until finally he ended up with this type of composition. And what's interesting about it is, not only is it a lovely piece of drawing, but if you look carefully at it, all of that emotion just kind of emanates from that incredible arm that Kublai Khan has, this arm right here. It's just filled with emotion. You can feel the blood heavily coursing through his veins as he feels sorry for the death of a warrior who obviously was a close friend of his. And not only that, but also there's other little touches in here that once again are typical Frazetto vir virtuoso touches. If you look at the way he did the knees here, and once again, when you see the reproduction of this in the book, you'll probably be able to see this a lot better. But these knees almost look like they're experiments in abstract expression. They're just so beautifully done. They're just so proper. And yet if you look at them carefully, you wonder, how could he do this? How did he get away with this? It reminds me of what Harvey Kurtzman said. Once again, a good friend of, of Frank Frazetta, EC, EC artist of worldwide uh, renown and acclaim. And Harvey Kurtzman used to look at one of uh, Frank's drawings and he'd say, how does he do it? I don't understand how he does it. It's, it's just, it's amazing how he puts so much in it. Nobody else can do that kind of thing. That's pretty high praise from a guy like Harvey Kurtzman. In any case, this is one of the sensational Kublai Khan plates. There's two others that I have. The signature plate of a standing image of Kublai Khan that's almost very reminiscent of the Conan the Barbarian pose, and also the portfolio cover with Kublai Khan on horseback looking back on his handiwork after destroying a complete city. Once again, that Kublai Khan on horseback, strongly reminiscent of the Death Dealer painting, and yet entirely different. But once again, Frazetta is just going back to themes that he knows, themes that he enjoys, and he recreates those themes and transforms them into a new kind of subject matter. So you look forward to seeing those in the catalog. These are all outstanding works of art. So once again, I hope they turn out well in the catalog. We're trying very hard to produce the finest catalog ever produced, and I think we will do a good job because everybody working on that catalog seems to have a passion about Frazetta. They seem to be very talented people, and they're motivated to produce a really excellent product. Thank you once again.